Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Chemistry Unplugged. Today we will discuss about stereoisomerism in alenes, spirenes and biphenyls. This stereoisomerism in biphenyls is also known as atrope isomerism and we will also discuss about RS naming of these molecules with lots of example. So please subscribe to my channel and click on bell icon for future notification. So let's start the video. First is alene. Alenes are the compounds in which two or more double bonds are present in cumulative manner. So what is the meaning of cumulative manner? Means when we have double bond in continuous manner or consecutive manner, then we call these alkenes cumulative alkenes or alenes. And when this number is even, then these two hydrogens are one plane and these two hydrogen or these two substituent on this carbon are in other plane in case of even double bonds even number of double bonds so first we have to understand the double bond formation in alenes so if the p orbitals on this carbons are in the plane of the paper and these p orbitals will overlap with the these p orbitals of second carbon which are also in the plane of the paper so this pi bond is formed by the overlapping of these p orbitals and other pi, or pi bond is formed by the overlapping of p orbitals which are coming out of the plane so in this way this carbon is sp hybridized because it is associated with two pi bonds so it is sp hybridized carbon and if we pass a plane which can divide this alkene into two equal halves this plane will consist of two hydrogens these two hydrogens will be in this plane and these two hydrogens one will be above the plane other will be below the plane so this vertical plane can divide alenes into two equal halves similarly other plane which contains these two hydrogens these two hydrogens will be in the plane and this hydrogen will be above the plane and this will be below the plane so in this way alenes substituted with hydrogens on both the ends contains two vertical planes and therefore it is optically inactive or achiral in nature because we know to be chiral it should not have vertical planes or uh, is alternating axis of symmetry or center of symmetry so in this way alenes are when not substituted with proper substituents will be achiral Suppose we place two methyl groups on one end, then what will happen? This alenes is again achiral because the plane containing two hydrogen atoms can divide this alenes into two equal halves containing methyl groups. And the alenes which is substituted on one end only, if we have only one methyl group, then this alene can also be divided into two equal halves. Okay, so it is also achiral in nature. The plane containing methylene hydrogen can divide alene into two equal halves. So this will also be achiral. And if we you place one methyl group on one end and other on other end, so in this case we cannot divide this alene into equal halves. The vertical plane containing this hydrogen and this methyl cannot divide the alenes into two equal halves. And similarly, the plane which containing left hand side methyl group and hydrogen can also not divide this alenes into two equal halves it means it does not contain a plane of symmetry means it is chiral in nature or optically active so to be optically active the alenes does not contain a carbon center so this chirality is not due to carbon center means this is due to the excess of symmetry so the criteria for the chirality in alkene is that there should be a proper substitution and number of double bonds should be even. So what is the meaning of even double bonds? If the double bonds are not even means if we have odd double bonds then substituents will be in the same plane. The substituent on both the ends will be in same plane and this can, can be divided by a horizontal plane of symmetry or a symmetry plane containing molecular axis so in this way they will be a chiral so the number of double bond should be even in the alenes to be optically active 
we can replace one double bond of alenes by four, five, and six membered rings. And in this way, the sum of rings and double bond should be even. Suppose we have a alene in which on one end we have a carboxylic group and hydrogen, and on other end, in place of other double bond, we are using a six membered ring. And on this six membered ring, we have two substituents. So this will be this will not contain any plane of symmetry, and this molecule will also be chiral in nature. Suppose we have a alene in we in which we have two double bonds and one six membered ring. So in this way, the sum of rings and double bond is odd. And when the sum is odd, means the substituents on both the ends will be in the same plane. And when in, they are in the same plane, the molecule has plane of symmetry and it is a chiral in nature. Next is spirins. Spirins, we know the spiro compounds in which the rings are fused by a single carbon atom. And when the ring are and in the spirins, one ring is in the plane and other is coming out of the plane. And this spirin is substituted by two substituents and at one end we have 2a and at other end we have 2b. So in this way we can divide this spirin into two equal halves because we have same substituents on both the carbons. We have this plane, this can also divide this spirin into two equal halves. So in this way this spirin has vertical planes and horizontal planes of symmetry means it will be achiral. And in the next example, suppose we have a spirin in which we have two different substituents on both the carbons. So in this way, we cannot divide this spirin into two equal halves. Suppose we are using a vertical plane, it cannot divide into two equal halves and horizontal plane can also not divide into two equal halves means it is chiral in nature. So how we can name alenes using RS nomenclature. So the rule is that near groups precede the far groups. So what is the meaning of this line near groups precede the far group. So first we take an example here. This is an example of alene and we have to number nomenclate it using R and S nomenclature. So what is the rule? We have to decide from which side we are looking the molecule. Okay, we can look from this side we can also look from this side. For in this example, I am looking this molecule from this side. In this, when I look it from this side, then the hydrogen and methyl on first carbon, which are in the vertical plane, will be close to my eyes. Okay. Methyl, hydrogen on above side and methyl is on the downside. So I will denote it by using a bold line. And the methyl and hydrogen on other carbon is far from the my eye okay so i will denote it by dash line and the hydrogen which is on the right hand side when i look from this side it will be on my right hand side and methyl will be on my left hand side so i will place it into in this in the same way okay now i will use khan and gold log method and i will give the higher and lower priority to the groups and I will move from higher priority to the low priority for the near groups. I will use the near group precede the far group. Means I will move from higher to lower priority group for the near groups. And I will move from the side of lower group of far group. Okay. Lower side of lower group of far carbon. So I will move from this side. And in this way, I am using a anti-clockwise. Therefore, it will ha has it has S configuration. In the next example, I am using a chlorine in place of methyl. So, and I, dis I will look it from this side. Okay. Now I am looking at this molecule from this right hand side. So, the groups which are in the horizontal plane will be close to my eye. Okay. And this hydrogen will be on my left hand side and chlorine will be on my right hand side. So, I will denote it by bold line. Because it is close to my eye. So when I am looking from this side. The back side which groups with methyl and hydrogen. Which are in the vertical plane. Will be away from my side. And I will denote it by dash line. Okay. Then I will give it higher and lower priority. And I will move 
from higher to lower priority for the near group and i will move from the side of lower group of lower group of far carbon so in this way i am using a clockwise this will be r configuration so if i want to look this molecule from left hand side suppose so what i will do this is the first condition this is in the second condition i am looking it from the left hand side now the vertical groups methyl and hydrogen will be close to my eye and i will denote it by bold line and hydrogen and with chlorine will be away from my side so I, so i will use dash line and because hydrogen is on the right hand side i will use it on the right and chlorine will be on my left hand side then i move from higher to lower priority group of near groups from the side of lower group of far carbon so it has r symmetry again so the configuration is same you can use any of side for the nomenclature in the next example i am using a spirin and in this spirin i will use the same method to nomenclate it suppose i am looking this molecule from this side so again i will place the hydrogen and this chlorine on the vertical plane and i will denote it using a bold line and this hydrogen and chlorine which are on the horizontal plane will be away from my side so i will use dash line i will uh, bold this line so it will be clear so on the far carbon hydrogen is on my right hand side and chlorine is on my left hand side i will denote them by high and lower priority group and i will move from higher priority group of near carbon to lower priority group of near carbon from the side of lower priority group of far carbon so it is anti clockwise has s nomenclature next are biphenyls this is an example of biphenyl and in the biphenyl in the solution phase one ring is the plane is in the plane and other is coming out of the plane okay so in the normal biphenyl we are using hydrogens at the ortho position 2 2 dash and 6 6 dash position we have hydrogen and in this situation these two rings can rotate along the single bond so in the first round they will be the both of them will be planar and in the second round the first ring will rotate and other will be in the plane so they can rotate along the single bond when the substituents are very small like hydrogen so in this way this biphenyl molecule has a plane of symmetry this is the plane which is which contains the planar by bi planar phenyl ring and it can bisect the phenyl ring which is coming out of the plane and the second plane which is containing horizontal phenyl ring can bisect the planar phenyl ring so in this way the this biphenyl molecule is a chiral because it is containing plane of symmetries now for the optically active ring should not have vertical plane of symmetry and the substituents in the ortho position should have larger size so suppose i have this biphenyl ring and i am using different substituents here like suppose i am using a carboxylic group here and nitro group similarly on this carbon i am using a nitro and carboxylic acid group so because of the presence of these substituents this biphenyl cannot be bisected by a vertical or horizontal plane of symmetry it cannot be divided into two equal halves means it is chiral in nature and because of the presence of these heavier groups on ortho position this ring cannot rotate along the single bond therefore we should not have the atoms like hydrogen fluorine and methoxy to be chiral biphenyl rings so the stereoisomerism in which we have stereoisomers due to the restricted rotation along the single bond they are known as atropisomerism for example in case of biphenyls the 
सिंगल बॉन्ड रोटेशन इज रेस्ट्रिक्टेड बाय द प्रेजेंस ऑफ हैवियर सब्सिट्यूएंट्स ऑन द ऑर्थो पोजिशन एंड इन दिस वे दे कैन बी रिजोल्व इन द इनेशियोमर्स सो दे कैन शो स्टीरियो दे कैन शो ऑप्टिकल एक्टिविटी and suppose we have a biphenyl in which i am using uh, two carboxylic group in the ortho position of one phenyl ring and two nitro groups on the two ortho positions of one other phenyl ring so in this way this phenyl has this biphenyl has plane of symmetry we can divide it into two equal halves so this is a chiral in nature so you have to place substituents in a correct order to be chiral so how we can name these biphenyls the method is similar to alenes we will suppose looking this biphenyl from this side so i will place the one carboxylic and nitro group vertical line by the bold i will denote it by a bold line and this is my right hand side therefore the nitro carboxylic group on other biphenyl will be on my right hand side and nitro will be on my left hand side now i will give them higher and lower priority carboxylic will be lower priority nitro will be higher priority group so i will move from higher to lower priority of near group from the side of lower group of far carbon so it is anti clockwise therefore it is s configuration suppose i have a biphenyl in which i am using fluorine in place of nitro group so this is a chiral because there is no restriction in the movement of this these biphenyls and they cannot be resolved in the enantiomers there is no plane of symmetry therefore the groups like fluorine and hydrogen should not be present in the biphenyls to be optically active in the next example i have two chlorine groups and the in the word ortho position so how i can name this biphenyl i will not use these two chlorine for the naming purpose i will use the methyl and hydrogen for this so i will place them on the vertical line containing hydrogen and methyl and denoted by bold line because it is near to me and for the dash line i will use the carboxylic and no2 group carboxylic is on my right hand side when i look from left hand side and no2 will be on left hand side then i will use higher and lower priority and move from higher to lower priority of near carbon from the side of lower priority group of far carbon so because it is anti clockwise therefore it is s configuration so that's it i will end my today's video here thank you so much for watching my video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for future notifications thank you